What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 38. We start today's stuff on the back of our big wins, but us through to the FA Cup quarter final away at the den against Millwall, which of course is going to be our second game of today's episode here. Uh, we have a scouting update and a academy update and also a loan offer for James Arnold from Stade Rene, which I accepted. Just very briefly on the scouting, by the way, uh, what I'm thinking of doing from next season onwards is just showing you the players I pick up and put in the academy and not bothering going through the whole list of players and showing you what players I reject as well. Just because it's it's quite time consuming, obviously. I, I speed the clips up as well, so you can just about make out who the players are and you can see why I've rejected them or given them a pro deal. But yeah, because the vast majority of players don't make our academy because we're very selective, I think from next season always, just to save some time, be able to condense the episodes a little bit better and get to the more important stuff, I think I might just show you the players that make it and not bother showing you the players I reject and why. So, a look at our fixtures for March. Four games, Burnley at home, Liverpool at home, Aston Villa away, and also our trip to the Den as well. And as big as that FA Cup quarterfinal is, right now 11 games to go in the season with two points behind Chelsea in fourth place as we sit in fifth. And Champions League football for Brentford is still on the cards. But if we're going to get there with 11 games to go, we need to win the vast majority of them. So no pressure whatsoever. Still, first game of the season. So the Claret, Sean Dyche's side, three minutes into the game. What a start this was. Not feeling the pressure. The goal machine gets another one. Roberto Gutierrez is having... A really good season, but of course he's been overshadowed by Ivan Tony's campaign. 13 in 24 is a great goal to game ratio for our Uruguayan forward. But because Tony right now is going for a new golden boot record, well, at the moment, Gutierrez is having a great season, but it feels bang average because of what he's being compared to. So, yeah, Brentford in front. Could have had his second goal straight afterwards, but a great save. Kept it at 1-0. And in 21 minutes in, in the first half an hour, where really, I was in attack mode from the very first whistle. A chance to make it to. Gutierrez sends it long. Ivan Tony beats Connor Roy. So, a great little knock-on. And the finish to match as well. The dynamic duo linking up for our second goal. And whilst Roberto would love a few more, he don't mind seeing his mate win the golden boot for the first time in this series. Yeah, going for that record, 32. Mohamed Salah said it a few years back with Liverpool. Tony has a chance to get more than that. Is he going to get to 40? No, don't think so. But even so, leading by two, that became three, 28 minutes in, really in the first half an hour. I was just on absolute flames. I, I don't know what it was, but you know those sort of games where like, you go into them and right from the very first whistle, you're just dominant. You're absolutely dominating. This was just one of those games. I can't explain the feeling, but it feels so good where you're just at ease with your players. You know exactly what to do and when. The build-ups are really nice. You're constantly creating chances. And 11 minutes after the restart, this is what I mean. Roberto Gutierrez gets his hat-trick. In style, Stanley Young down the left-hand side, dinks it into the middle for yet another assist for our, 26, uh, our number 26, going for the assist title this year. But it's all about the finish from Roberto. And like I told you, when you're feeling it in the games where you're just in full confidence, you can do things like this. First Scorpion kick goal of the series, and it's Roberto Gutierrez, the goal machine, with another. It is his 15th of the season. And the match ball, our first hat-trick, sorry, our second hat-trick of the season, but his first of the campaign. Second in two years as well, after his hat-trick at Craven Cottage last season. This one a lot less controversial, but a lot more stylish. Four in the final score. You see the stats there. Absolutely dominated from start to finish. And talking of dominance as well, Gutierrez with a hat-trick and setting up Tony's goal as well. Just a brilliant all-round performance from the Uruguayan. And again, his good season has been overshadowed by Ivan Tony's great one. That's, that's, the, that's the only way I can put it. Like he's having a good season, but Tony's is so much better that it's just completely overshadowed. Anyway, for the second game of today's episode, I could not wait for this. Yes, to return to the den away at Millwall for the second of four in today's episode. FA Cup quarter final London derby and a chance to reach Wembley for the first time in the series. All cameras on me, boyhood Millwall fan. The question was, would I take it easy on the side I got a lot of love for? Or would we just go full throttle and try and get to Wembley in style? Maybe, just maybe, I was muttering let him come during the intro. Maybe, just maybe, I was singing along no one likes us with the fans. Just muttering under my breath so no one could hear it. 
But despite that being the case, I wasn't going to show no mercy whatsoever. It's always a really cool feeling when you're doing a career mode and you get drawn against one of your teams you support or the team you support if you only support one team. And for me, getting drawn against Millwall was just great. But I, I, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I wasn't going to show any mercy. I wasn't going to take it easy. I'm trying to get Brentford in the Champions League and reach Wembley for the first time in the say. There's no time to be sentimental. you got to go all out. We took lead very early on. Ivan Tony inside the first five minutes and could have made it two as well. 21 minutes in. Josh to Silver and I by the woodwork as we were still up by a goal. Millwall had a lot of the ball in the first 35 minutes because I was playing fast, counter-attacking football and not, not, not looking to conserve possession. But with eight minutes to go, a really quick break. Saw so Stanley and Ivan play a 1-2. And this guy is quickly becoming my favourite young player in this team. Stanley Young. I love him. Absolutely love him. 2-0 Brentford. Ashley's nephew doubles our lead right in front of the travelling fans. And at this point, again, the Lions had so much of the ball in this game. But we'd look the better team. And every time we got the ball, watch the red and white shirts come forward here. We're looking to get on the offensive. Looking to get players forward. Ivan Tony rounds his man, rolls it through to Mbwemo, hold off to Gutierrez and look at the space as well. Play the counter perfectly and Roberto wraps it up to make it free with his fourth goal in two games. 16 minutes to go and it was over. Millwall nil, Brentford free. I was, I was, you know, keeping my celebrations calm on the sidelines, not wanting to get the home fans angry. But you best believe inside, I was smiling quite heavily. Always a shame to knock the team you love out, but hey, had to show no mercy because we're through. We're into Wembley for the first time ever. But your ticket, because we're going there, FA Cup semi-final. Only problem is, I'm not sure we're going to make the final in our first cup final. So yeah, we've got Manchester United in the final four. Arsenal versus Aston Villa is the other tie. But the Red Devils, who are going for the title, who have already won the Carabao Cup this season, by the way. And they're also going for the Europa League, too. Yeah, they're on course right now for a famous quadruple. Oli's got it sorted. He's at the wheel, and they're in full throttle right now. We got them in the FA Cup semi-final. I'm not fancying our chance. But at least we're there. At least we're there. First time in the series. I so desperately wanted to reach Wembley back in Season 1. Last year, didn't have much of a cup run. But this season... Here we are, first time to save, we're heading to Wembley. But again, despite that being the case, there's still more important things at hand, and that is trying to get Brentford into the Champions League. I talked about it, if we're going to do it, we need to win the vast majority of our remaining games. Ten to go in the season, and for our third of today's episode, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. They put five past the Red Devils on the weekend. The question was, could we defend better? The answer was yes, but only until the 71st minute. I was playing some great defence in this game. I really was not letting him inside. But I've talked about it before. The AI on ultimate only need a sniff. Look at the tight of, tightest of angles there for Kulisewski to spash it in. But he still managed to do it. Really tight angle right on the byline, but still finds the back of the net. And Liverpool had themselves their lead and get in front. It was a game where both teams had defended really well. I couldn't really create that many chances myself. And with three minutes to go, still down by one. We had a lot of shots in the game, but they all came from range. None of which really troubled Alisson much until this one did. And how many times have I said this throughout the course of this save? He's done it again. The shocker, the saviour, the star, the hero. Brentford won, Liverpool won, and again, in a game where I had a lot of shots, but all coming from range, none had really given Alisson much trouble. This one was the one we were waiting for. On the half volley with the weaker left foot, Tony bangs it in past the Brazilian for goal number 26. He's surely going to win the golden boot now. The question is, can he set the new record with nine games to go? He needs seven goals in those nine. It's definitely doable, but he doesn't really mind too much so long as we keep ourselves in the hunt for the Champions League. 1-1 one, one the final score. You saw what the stats there. We had 11 shots, but the XG was the exact same. And the reason why is because, again, the vast majority of our shots came from outside the area. Just one of those games where I just could not break the defense down. Both teams played amazing defense in that game as well. It's one of those games where, like, obviously I don't really show too many defensive highlights because it takes up quite a bit of time. 
And obviously I try and make the highlights package um, as key as they can be, if you will. Uh, but that was one of those games where like, if I was going to show defensive highlights, you'd see what I mean. Like Both teams put in great tackles, big blocks, huge last-ditch interceptions. Just a really great game for the defenders in the end. 1-1, the final score. So following that, Bessie, who was our highest rated youth player, comes out of the academy. He's got the exciting prospect tag. Another attacking midfielder in his team with so many of them. I'm going to try and loan him out next season. And for our fourth and final game away, this Villa Park, aiming to go back to winning ways, needed to, to keep ourselves in the hunt for Champions League football. Couldn't believe it, 10 minutes in, what a sitter, being amongst the goals recently, Gutierrez, I don't know how I messed it up so badly, couldn't even the target, put it wide the post, still 0-0, but with Aston Villa struggling right now towards the bottom of the table, I knew I'd get more chances, and 8 minutes before the break, we got one, and this time, we took it, yet another goal for our club captain, Ivan Tony. sure to win the golden boot, going for the record as well, but most importantly, trying to get Brentford in the Champions League, 1-0 up, and again, again, game where I knew we get a lot of chances. Aston Villa this season haven't defended especially well down the bottom end of the table right now trying to keep their heads above water 56 minutes in, Brian and Buemo, what a season for our number 19. I keep on saying it, I'll say it again, transitions take time. It took him a while to come good, but I knew he could do it this season, and he has been much more effective. 2-0 Brentford, Aston Villa didn't give up though, uh, as you can see, Baum Gartner celebrating with Dean Smith makes it 2-1, they're still behind the manager as they get back in the game. Deficit halved, but would it prove to be nothing other than a consolation goal? But they play quite a high press game in the final 10 minutes, trying to put me under pressure, but I've mentioned it before for. That is such a dangerous thing to do against this Brentford team. Brilliant little build up here, getting in behind the back line. I was seven minutes to go. Oh, he's been sensational recently. Fired a blank against Liverpool, missed a golden chance earlier, but wasn't going to miss once again. Gutierrez having a brilliant season, overshadowed by Ivan Tony, but he wraps up the points. 3 1 at Villa Park, and again, if you play that high press game against me and this Brentford team, you're in trouble. Once we get in behind the back line, forget about it. We've got ourselves a goal. 3 1 the final score. Big, big victory at Villa Park and a return to winning ways. And as you see the league table and how tight it is, eight games to go. We're four points behind the Gunners in fourth. We're only one point behind Chelsea in fifth and only ahead of Everton on goal difference in seventh. Champions League, Europa League or Conference League, we still got absolutely no idea. But that won't this episode of Career Mode, guys. Big fan which I've enjoyed. If you had please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.